I think restorative practice is all about a way of moving forward from a situation and a way of resolving a problem that you wouldn't normally resolve. We've uh, been working a lot on relationships between members of the school community um, for many years now and working out different mechanisms by which we can get to know each other well and we can support each other in our work. When the person at this end gets the communication, you pick up that sponge ball. Here we go. If you're going to introduce restorative practices into a school, then you also need to be working with everybody in the school, including the kids. <laughs> Otherwise it's like playing a game where only one person has all of the rules. What we need to do is give young people the same messages as we give to the staff and we give to other agencies. It's important that the students learn, pick up the RP principles as soon as they come into Car Manor. Um, so as soon as they're in year seven, you know that they learn how to facilitate or work out, resolve issues with each other that they've had with each other. We've obviously trained up year seven reps as well to be involved so that they can work with their peers and come together to resolve issues that have come up between them and other peers. And they often understand it a lot better than members of staff would. Restorative practice is about resolving situations and if situations are more easily resolved then there's less of an issue with behaviour. It helps a lot with uh, minor conflicts with pupils. I um, had a couple that I did actually in a class, um, did a circle and then afterwards took a couple of pupils who were having problems with each other out of the class and we used RP to get them to have a better relationship and actually build a relationship in the first place. I'd like to just take a seat both of you please. Thank you very much indeed. In a friendship group, you kind of feel like you don't want to say something to upset the person. All three of us are here to, to discuss an incident which has happened early on this morning in the classroom. With restorative practice, you kind of let your feelings out and the other person let their feelings out and you kind of listen to both sides of the story and you kind of see where your friend is coming from because I think without restorative practice, a lot of feelings do get left inside and feel like, oh, because he or she is my friend, I can't let my feelings out to them, they might get mad at me or whatever. It's a way of being in a calm environment and talking to the person who's affected and the way you're feeling and expressing your emotions to the person so they can understand your point of view and you can understand their point of view. And it's just a way of bringing harmony to everyone and just getting on together as one. Okay. Restorative practices has given us an explicit language under which we can work and some methods by which we can do that work effectively and consistently across the school. As a parent, it's, it's had a really good effect. Uh, my two daughters go here at Car Manor. I was also really interested in restorative practice and uh, I was actually invited in to see a session in school. I think it's just a great tool that can be used with, with parents, uh, carers uh, and with the young people themselves. And uh, just that ability to say, let's have a look at this card, let's have a look at these questions, is a very powerful thing, rather than uh, where do we start now. Hopefully it'll be used around the dinner table as it is in a school situation. And I think that's one of the powers of restorative practice. The question sort of makes you reflect on your behaviour and how you've affected other people, not just yourself, but everyone that was involved, even though you might think you didn't do like a big harm to the person, but listening to their side of the story can sort of make you think, would I like it if someone did that to me? And make you think twice of whether you want to do that again next time. One particular incident where we used it was to deal with the issue of bullying in the class. Um, Everyone had a chance to have their say and everyone had a chance to really express how people's comments, um, how other people in the class were making them feel. And since then, the pupils have really been different towards each other. They've really actually understood and recognised what the comments that they were making. And we're now at a more harmonious stage in the lessons where they think before they say. Uh, some people I heard before uh, may think it's an easy option. But actually, it's a really good way for uh, people to challenge and support without being confrontational. Sometimes the student gets misunderstood by the way he reacts or they react to the situation. If people don't get their say, then usually people will then get upset and they then decide that it's not worth trying to resolve issues and that's never the, never the right way to go about it. If you don't sit down and speak, We'll just be going in a circle really, we'll be outside school fighting the next day, we'll be shouting at each one, it'll keep on going around, the words will get spread. If you want to listen to the person that's being affected, it's like you don't know why they got affected or why the other person did it. You often get when a teacher and a student disagree, 
it always seems that it's always the student fault. If they talk about it like in a, in a civil way rather than just like the teacher saying I'm the teacher so um, what I say goes and you're going out of the class if like they want to listen people who might behave badly might be more um, well they might like comply more and like just kind of not be as bad if the teachers are more willing to work with them. Uh, I think it makes it a lot more cohesive uh, climate and it makes it uh, actually a, a less stressful place to work. Because I work with a lot of the transition classes, we use it quite a lot during lessons. Sometimes it's to start a lesson just to make sure everybody's calm. Sometimes it's to finish a le lesson off and to use it in terms of a plenary, making sure that everybody's understand the learning. There are certain classes that it's worked very effectively with because what it's done, it's allowed them to understand the importance of listening to people and not actually um, interrupting other people whilst they're having a conversation. So being able to use a a talking piece to take turns to go around in a sequential circle um, and to wait until it's their time it allows them to think before they speak so you get clearer answers a lot of the time and it's really nice to see the children all focusing and giving people a quality audience and listening very carefully to what other people have to say to then come back to be able to respond to it The way that staff have responded to training is really positively so far. The, I've developed some nice relationships with staff around this and other schools where we've done training. And uh, some really good feedback about uh, how they're putting a bit of it into practice through coaching, teaching and learning and many other aspects of school life. We have something at Carmanna High School called coaching. And in our coaching session, the other children actually used it to talk the child who was struggling in English to support him and give him ideas as to how to improve his behaviour. And lo and behold, the next day he acted upon their advice, which was to turn up on time, not to say anything, and to get on with his work. And he stayed for the whole lesson and was, did not need to be removed and was very successful. We use circle times a lot in coaching because, like, say when two groups joined together, you might not really know people as that well in that other coaching group and it helps you communicate, think, giving you a lot of ideas. We're beginning to see the impact both in relationships between people but also in the performance in the classroom. So what we're expecting to see is restorative practice coming across the whole school community in the way that people work together and in the way that we raise standards and expectations. And we can see that coming already, and we've seen that over a number of years, but we, I think we can accelerate that. When they leave high school, it's going to be a skill that they're going to take with them to the workplace or wherever they go to. So if you come into a situation that you don't know how to resolve it, they might think, RP, I did it in high school, let me try this on this person, let's see how it works out. So it'll be a very harmonised city, and everyone will just get on a lot better than they do now. And yeah, it'd just be a really, really nice city to be in.